Good morning, folks. Shots of a fireball over China that kicked off the weekend. This one was exceptionally bright. A couple folks feared a missile attack before it broke apart. They were indeed able to find the meteor on the ground, which is a hunt that may be ongoing in South Africa this morning because this fireball is said to have made a minor ground impact too. This one was just yesterday and we're lucky to see it via this home security camera. Let's say we hop over to spaceweathernews.com, find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly calm indeed. We're watching the coronal hole depart as solar flaring remains south of C-class range. The bright umbral fields on the north are heading for the limb. We've just got some small fields visible on the left and the east incoming. But those steel ones focus away from the southwestern limb where the only solar eruption of the last day occurred. Zoomed in, you can see a coronal cavity exit the corona, which means it must have been a filament release. Coming to ionized helium reveals the filament before the eruption, and we get to watch it eject. Let's come to the solar wind, where we're still well above average intensity, but we've come down from the stream peak, and geomagnetism is calming a bit this morning. Likely have another day or so of faster streams based on the size of the coronal hole, where that solar wind is coming from. No coronal holes visible behind it just yet. Bit of tropic watch time here. The system south of Mexico is slated to intensify into tropical depression strength or stronger in the next three to five days as it chugs westward. Meanwhile, in the West Pacific, we've got a triple system lined up from the Guam area to the South China Sea. Eyes on them. Couple science articles today. First, we find that while solar wind speed and temperature are key for determining solar storm effects, they say the ionization state of the particles in the corona before being blasted out is a huge factor as well. For those in Mexico who think their magnetic latitude means they don't need to worry about solar storms, just hope we don't get another Carrington event anytime soon. Global effects. Canada is paying attention and has plans for a nationwide cosmic ray monitoring initiative based on human dose. We've got the AGU making good on their promise to highlight electric currents in the atmosphere and geospace. Lots of articles coming out on Birkeland currents and the global electric circuit. Veteran observers know there is an equinox geomagnetic vulnerability compared to solstice and other times of the year. This paper suggests it is due to our exposure to the solar polar fields, as equinox represents Earth's highest and lowest points heliographically, above and below the solar equator, putting us more in the way of one set of the polar fields in late March and September. Lastly, folks, these three Maryland professors are not getting their invite to the IPCC Global Warming Hoedown this year, highlighting significant problems across the temperature data sets with conflicting data allowing us to currently have 0.4 to 0.6 degrees variation in the list, which is over half of global warming, by the way. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.25 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.